Hello and welcome to Senior Solutions, where we bring you topics affecting seniors and their families. I'm your host, Mindy Fellington. Some of you may know of someone who lost a loved one and they had all this stuff. And what are we going to do with all this stuff? Or they know someone who may be moved, downsizing, moving into an assisted living or an independent living environment. And what are we going to do with all that stuff? Well, my guest today is Colleen Katz. She's the president of Vintage Merchant Estate Sales, and she's here to tell us about what to do with all that stuff. Welcome, <laughs> Colleen, and thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me, Mindy. So tell us what you do as an estate sale person and how you can help people. Okay. Well, first of all, we have to make an assessment. We need to come out and take a look at what you have. Um, the stuff. The stuff. Um, and what your plans are. So if you're wanting to just, you know, do like a partial estate and sell off some of your things or sell off an entire estate, possibly for a loved one, um, many people are downsizing and moving into a smaller space or helping mom and dad move into assisted living. So most times it's a downsizing situation and um, we need to see what you have and give you a time frame. Uh, we work with dates. Sometimes people are moving and they have to move rather quickly. Um, and so, you know, they have limited time and they have to get it done. Um, so we come in, it takes a couple of weeks to stage a, a sale, and, um, and then we do a three-day sale. Can, uh, how about if you kind of walk me through mm -hmm. working with someone? Okay. From step one to what do we do next? Sure, sure. What does the staging look like? Okay. Uh, well, initially, like I said, we make an assessment and we work with you on the items that you want to have sold. Uh, many times there are things within the home that you do want to keep. So as far as doing the actual sale, the only thing we ask of our client is for them to remove the items they want to keep. We can even cordon them off to another room and just you know, lock that door and then sell the rest of the contents in the home. Um, we ask that you remove your papers, your personal papers, bills, anything with your name on it is good to be gone, and, you know, photos, that kind of thing. And then just leave the rest of the job to us. We come in, we, we stage. What does um, that we, well, staging entail? Sure. We stage uh, by basically exposing everything to the public in a way that makes it look like a store. So we will bring in additional tables if needed, and we pull everything out of the cupboards and cabinets, and we do a little cleaning if necessary. We put, you know, china with china. We stage things in the appropriate rooms. Um, and it really does look like, you know, a store. We want everything visible so people can see what there is to choose from and shop. And I would imagine that also includes pricing things? Yes. Yep. The more organized the sale is, and the more that we do ahead of the sale, the better the sale runs. So we want to try and price everything. Absolutely. Well, talking about pricing, mm -hmm. how do you determine the price for certain things? Because I would imagine there's, <laughs> Good some, question. there's some golden uh, and, opportunities in them. They are hills You know, sometimes. there's a range in every house, and every house is unique. Um, we have homes we go into where people are collectors of certain things, and they really have a lot of pride in certain things. And so we work with them on pricing. If they're firm on certain things and they don't want to sell it unless they can get a certain price, we work with them that way as well. Um, I will say that we do our research. We try to go with um, the fact that most homes are pretty general in the sense that everyone has a vacuum and everyone has a blender. Uh, we will take a secondary market approach to those items. Uh, we will get online. We will look at you know online auctions to see what that kind of market is getting for that kind of item. We typically start the sale somewhere around that price, and then through the weekend, the three-day process, we come off of that price. And what's your average rule of thumb for how you reduce your prices? Well, the first day is going to be the price we put on there. It's usually a little piece of blue painter's tape and a magic marker, and I have it priced. Um, and then the second day, you can assume that we're going to take probably somewhere between 25 to 30 percent off of it. And on the last day, 50 to 60 percent. Wow. Mm -hmm. And if the item doesn't sell, what happens? Well, that's also a very good question. Well, thank you. I yeah, try. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, so I always want the family to come back in at that point because I feel that they should take a look at it and see if there are items they want to keep. Um, you know, simply because all of these things do have some value to it. Uh, so they come in and look and see if they want to keep anything. If they don't, we make suggestions of different donation organizations in the Washington area, and believe me, there are plenty. 
Um, and we can help them coordinate with those um, organizations to do pickups. And then they get a tax note for what they've donated. And uh, how do you know that the estate sale is the right solution for you? Well, I think that every client has a different story. Um, but many times they're selling for someone else. Sometimes it's a, a child selling for a parent. Um, sometimes it's a divorce situation, unfortunately, but they still need to liquidate. Uh, everybody has stuff, and everybody has to liquidate things at all times. Um, unlike a yard sale where you know anybody can just go and throw stuff in their yard, uh, this presents it in a better environment where you can get top dollar for that secondary market uh, by bringing people into your home and displaying items correctly, making sure that the item works before you sell it, and little things like that. We, we really work to do it as professionally as possible, and with our knowledge and our research, um, we can achieve, I think, a higher profit for our client. I'm eager to ask you about any hidden treasures. Like, what's the most exciting thing that you found <laughs> in doing an estate sale? Oh, let's see. Or valuable. Well, you know, it's, sometimes it's just unexpected things. I think it's more like that. Um, I think sometimes people have things in drawers they don't realize they have, um, or they don't realize that their silver plate is really sterling, and we have to inform them that. It is because it's worth so much more <laughs> that way. Funny how so, that works. You know, we're surprised and they're surprised. Um, it's just, you know, every house has a different story. And um, sometimes it's, uh, you know, a nice piece of artwork that can, you know, obviously, you know, get top dollar. Um, so sought after item. It could be a piece of mid century furniture that you might look at it like, yeah, it's a 1950s chair, big deal. I never want to see that again. Uh, no. That is really hot right now, depending upon who made it, where it was made, and uh, they're very collectible. So, you know, it, it just really depends. Every house has something, though, and mm -hmm. um, we aim to sell it and get them the most money for it. That's good to know. Yeah. Why would you recommend someone hire an estate sale company? Simply for that fact that we are knowledgeable, and if we don't have the information, we can research it and get the right person on it to get the information we do uh, offer an, uh, you know, an appraisal. We can get appraisals. It, many times an appraisal is not necessary. Most homes are kind of, you know, pretty basic. They have the furniture that we can look up. You know, there's a lot of ways online to look up and research. But we will go in and get all that done. It's time consuming. Um, it's long hours. Um, and then you, to conduct the sale, it's a retail environment. You have the general public in your home. So, um, we know how to handle that too. Yeah, tell me what <laughs> what do you do? You have, you have a bat. It's like no, get no, your hands off that unless you pay. It's, it's not <laughs> anything like that. Um, we want to I'm make. I'm teasing, of course. <laughs> we we want to make it a pleasant shopping experience. So I have my client that I represent and who I you know is my first and foremost uh, you know issue where I want to make sure that they are happy. Um, but then I want my customers to come and I want them to have a good time too. Um, it's the favorite American pastime. Estate sales are all over the D.C. area and really all over this country. I mean, people go to them. It's every oh, weekend. I have a friend in outside of Atlanta, and she and her husband constantly go there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a great way to pick up good things that are gently used, and there's certainly nothing wrong with them. I mean, if you can get past that idea that you're going into some stranger's home, um, once you're in there, it's really set up with... Um, you know, tables and pricing, if it's done right, I think. Um, and we have a staff. So you have, it's almost like, wa I wouldn't say walking into Macy's, but it's the secondary market of Macy's. So we, we really want people to come in and have a good time and find lots of goodies and get bargains. Uh, the people that come to our sales range from, you know, your next-door neighbor who's maybe just checking it out and maybe being <laughs> a little nosy to no. um, bargain hunters and uh, antique dealers, uh, you name it, everybody comes. So how do you protect from theft? In, in well, that's the thing. I mean, we have to have enough people in there manning it, and so that's always important. I always discuss the staffing with my client ahead of the sale so they understand, you know, what really needs to be there to cover. Every state's a different size. I mean, I've been in homes that have eight bedrooms, and I've been in, you know, little apartments with two. So just having enough people there, eyes on, ears on, and um, and then conducting it in a way where you make it easy for people to pay. So we even take credit cards so mm -hmm. that folks, you know, and they're many times surprised by that. They know they're in someone's home and they're like, is this your house? 
you take a credit card? You know, like, I don't get it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that credit card is, is awesome. So everybody spends a little more when they have a credit card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't relate to that at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, transition for everyone is very overwhelming and, it is. and difficult. And particularly f as people age, I think it becomes that much more overwhelming. Absolutely. What does your company do to help to ease that of that sense of what do I do? Right, right. Well, once again, um, you know, with starting with having us come in where you can ask all those questions to us, um, every situation is unique. Uh, when I find that the kids are there, and I'm talking maybe kids that are my age, and they are really concerned about mom and dad and getting them into an assisted living situation, their focus should be on mom and dad, and they know that, and they don't want to be spending their time selling furniture and, you know, dishes and the vacuum cleaner. So that's where I come in. And I just say to them, you know, you focus on mom and dad, leave the rest to me. Um, and I work with them closely. I like to communicate very really well with my client so that they know I'm getting the job done. Um, I ask a lot of questions in the beginning. And um, For example, makes, what, what are those? Well, I always want to know um, when I come in there if they have pulled everything out that they want to keep. And I ask that question several times. Because does I, that change throughout the course of working it, it with them? It does sometimes, but it's also they mean to pull things and they're so busy or thinking of other things. or you know. And, and lots of times I'm not even dealing with the kids. It's just somebody who's responsible for the transition and they're a little bit removed from it. So I have to stay back behind them on that. Because the worst thing it would be is if I sold something that they never intended of selling. I feel really bad about that. So I always ask that a lot. And, um, and if they have certain concerns, I can pick up on that in the beginning that I want to make sure to follow through on anything um, from the start. You know, like if they just don't want something disturbed in a certain room or, you know, we're going to get this later, we're going to take care of that. I try to pencil that in myself so I know when they want to have certain things done. And I always communicate back with them that those things are being followed through on. Yeah, it makes, makes it smoother and it makes them feel at ease. I find that it's so stressful for people in a transition. Um, and it doesn't matter how old you are. I think yeah. everybody gets, you know, you know, overwhelmed. Well, I think statistically isn't moving like up there in one of the I biggest that. stressors. Of to death, yeah. yeah. Death itself, yeah. Yeah. But um, I think once it's done, they feel like the weight is off their shoulders. When they come back in and they see the house is empty and... Um, they didn't have to do any of the work, and they're like, wow, you know, they, they, it, they couldn't fathom it at the beginning when they saw all this stuff, and then they come in, and it's like, wow, you know, they, even though there's still stuff, they see how much was sold, and they're amazed. They can't believe people will come to their home to do this, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. <laughs> but we have quite a following, and um, so, yeah, and it works out great, and then, like I said, I, help, I can continue by helping them with donation, and then finally the hauling. I, I'm a big believer in don't throw anything out, try to sell it first, then we donate, and then we call the hauler. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of times you don't even need a hauler. Yeah. So. Well, you, you help with that, Yeah, too. I will help orchestrate You'll that. I can give them the numbers. They can call themselves, or I can do that for them. You know, I, it's like I said, it's, it, every situation is unique. Everyone, you know, I just finished with a lady. Um, she is downsizing to a sailboat. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's <laughs> she and her husband are on their way south right now. And um, she wanted to be a little more involved in every little thing and every little, you know, so she kept coming back from the sailboat. They were in Annapolis. And um, just to say at this stage she wanted to do this, but, but she wanted my numbers and she wanted my recommendations and my referrals, and then I would show up and kind of, help her finish each stage. So. Well, we can talk a little bit more about her mm -hmm. when we come back and maybe some other stories that are, sound like that, but we're going to take That's a, a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <How> about? <laughs> we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. So I just moved in with his family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that! That's disgusting! Oh, poop already! You're making me nervous! Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back to Senior Solutions, where we bring you topics affecting seniors and their families. 
I'm your host, Mindy Fellenton, and I'm joined today by Colleen Katz, who's president of Vintage Merchants Estate Sales. And welcome back, and thank you again for being here, Colleen. Thank you. Before we went to break, we were talking about your customer, client, who you were working with, who mm -hmm. downsized to go live on a sailboat. How wonderful for them in <laughs> Annapolis. Um, I, I was curious, though, when we were talking about the process of the sale, mm -hmm. whether or not you run into people who are really conflicted about, they're emotionally attached, but they know they don't really need the item, but there's some emotional component. Do you kind of help them with that? Sure, to a certain degree. I mean, I talk to them about, you know, the sensibility of it. Are they going to need it? You know, is it going to fit in where they're going? Um, the worst thing that can happen to someone is they hold on to too many things, they get to the new place, and they're crammed with all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, wait a minute. Calling you back. This didn't work. So, you know, I try to just, you know, tell them, say, does it fit? Is it really working for you? You know, is it in your lifestyle now? Um, but surprisingly enough, too, I mean, most people, once they make this decision, they are ready to let go. They, they don't want it, it's, and it's such a relief to them when it's gone. <laughs> it's like, it's gone and I've got money in my hand. This is yeah. awesome. So, and they didn't have to do any of the work. You know? So speaking of the money, mm -hmm. how does that work when someone's working with your company? Sure. Um, you know, once again, if it's a partial estate, there's a certain uh, commission but everything is based on what's sold. Mm -hmm. So um, if it's partial, there's you know one percentage. If it's a full estate, there's another percentage. Um, you have to look at the estate to really make the correct ass assessment and a fair assessment. But whether I'm doing a partial sale for a client or you know we're doing a full sale, um, it's the same work. It's a lot of work. It's um, you know. It seems it's, like it's it. intense because it's a it's like a project. I always look at it as like an event. I'm getting ready for a party, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm setting it up, you know, and all that. And then I open my doors and I have this three day party. And I like to look at it that way. That's right. I like to look at it that way. And there's actually a little bit of a letdown at the end. I'm sure I'm tired, but um, you know, it's kind of sad too because like, okay, now the house is empty. It just doesn't feel good anymore because I've made it look so pretty and staged and set up and mm. people love to come in and shop and find goodies and then it's gone. The party's over. Then it's over and we find another one. But um, the reality is is uh, we work on a commission that is based on um, the client's profit. And so the more money my client makes, the more money I will make as well. And I try to, you know, get the, the most for them and that's that's my goal. I mean, I, I think that's me being fair to my client. Mm -hmm. um, on the other end of that is the customer who comes through the door who's been my customer over and over and they're like, yeah, but... And I think a lot of people think that the venue is like a flea market where they can dicker with you, but I've signed a contract with my client and we have the rules and we live by them and I explain that to my customers and some get it and some don't, um, but I always smile and say, you know, if you don't like the price today, come back tomorrow. <laughs> It might be here, but it might not. <laughs> right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the risk that they take, mm -hmm. I guess, if they really want something. Right. And, and I think we, we, we try to start it at a fair price, and we go down from there. So, Good. Yeah. Good. So um, I think I have a sense of what somebody needs to do to prepare for the sale. It sounds like they need to decide what's, what's staying and what's going. Right, and just separate them. So I don't make a mistake and sell something that shouldn't be. So. Is there anything else that people should do in order to get ready for the sale? You know, I just want to be able to be have them available to me at some point if I have a question. Um, if I find something in the house that I think they need to know about that maybe they missed or they, you know, and I want to be sure they want to sell it. You know, little things like that. I just like to really communicate well with my client and... I don't mean to say I pester them, but um, in the very beginning, I might do a little bit of that just to make sure that we're doing it well. Yeah. Well, the end game is the reason you're doing it. Right. Do you take environmental issues into uh, Absolutely. account? Absolutely. And, you know, it's funny. It's the ultimate recycler. Um, I don't think they are thinking about that at the time, but how many people have filled a black trash bag with stuff that they just thought was trash and then thrown it down a dumpster or whatever and... You know, it was a half-used box of, you know, plastic lunch bags. They think, oh, nobody's going to want to buy that. That's not true. You know, we slap a little blue tape on it, put a price on it, and it goes out the door. And yeah, not a landfill. Exactly. Who would think? Who would think? But <laughs> it, And that's why I always say, don't throw anything out, because you never know what someone's going to buy. That old adage. One, 
one's, one's trash, trash with another's another trash. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I always say there's time to do that, but you don't do it in that order. Let's first try and sell it. Yeah, I'm shocked. And it doesn't matter what it is. Cause, and, and I've been in homes where they think they have to get it ready for me just to be able to come in and make an assessment. And I always say, please don't do that, but, you know, they've already done it. So I walk in and they go, oh, well, we've, you know, donated all of this. And, oh, there was a bunch of stuff over here and we threw it out. And I'm like, and I don't even know it went out that way. But it, you'd be surprised. I mean, there are collectors that want unusual things. Mm -hmm. And um, old things sometimes aren't valuable and sometimes they are. Um, there's just no telling until you really have it in front of you and do a little research on it. Mm -hmm. So I always say, just don't throw it out. You know, let us look at it first. Right, do an assessment. Yeah. Well, that's a good word of uh, tidbit to take from the show for Absolutely. everybody to make sure that they sell, donate, and then haul. Yeah, but but <laughs> don't jump to conclusions and think that nobody's going to buy this these right. plastic bags. Right. I'm astonished that people do, but good to know. Absolutely. Good to know. Don't get rid of anything yet. Not until no. Colleen comes in and <laughs> comes to the rescue. Are there stores that do estate sales or sell older things who come to regularly? Oh, I see. To... Well, you know, the folks that come to these sales range from um, your neighbor, like we were talking earlier, to uh, somebody who saw a sign on the road that I put up. Um, there are a couple of estate sales sites that people follow. Because, like I said, it's a favorite American pastime. EstateSales.net. Statesales.org. Everyone gets on there. They, those are the same. Those are the people that come every weekend, and you know they love to shop this way. It's the only way they shop. So um, they look at the pictures that I put up. I load lots of photos. Um, I, you know, I have a sale that I'm getting ready to do in Poolsville right now, and I have close to 200 photos up. And wow. I'm already doing email exchanges. People are wanting to know dimensions, this kind of thing, and you know they like what they see. That's awesome. That's a great feedback to me right away. So I know that people are going to come. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but um, and pay. But you have, you know, you'll have antique dealers. You'll have eBayers, folks that resell. Um, they come to find something so that they can put it on their eBay site and you know make a little profit off of it. Mm -hmm. So, and that's where you have your you know quote unquote margin of error. Maybe I priced it at one thing, but come back on Sunday if you don't like that price. You know, um, you know that kind of thing. So those folks will come and buy, and um, your neighbor and just everybody, mm -hmm. everyone. Well, I, I, one of the things I was going to ask you is what. What do you do to advertise them, and then how far mm -hmm. in advance do you advertise them? Well, I, as soon as I can get into the home and start taking photos um, and get information on the items, I start to research and that type of thing. I like to load them. Um, on my two online locations, estatesales.net and estatesales.org, you'll find Vintage Merchant on, on both of those. And then for the sale itself, I uh, feel you have to always have a, a print ad in the Washington Post. Um, there are a lot of folks that, you know, really don't get on the computer, um, but they have a lot of disposable income, and they do read the paper for the estate sales. So I do that, and I do road signs. Um, I have an extensive email list of my followers, my, mm -hmm. my friends and followers who have been coming to my sales for years. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it works. I mean, you will know you're having a good sale if you've got a line at the door when you get there to open it the first day. <laughs> so... And that's nice. So once the house, everything's sold, mm -hmm. and the house is pretty much empty, what what happens next? Well, for me, I'm finished. I, I would, um, you know, within that week, finish up the paperwork and send to my client their proceeds check along with any type of donation tax forms um, for anything that they had me donate. Um, and that's pretty much it. And, they, you know, everybody gets to walk away from it at that point. They're happy to move on. Their home is emptied. I can coordinate more things for them if they need to have somebody come in and clean it, that kind of thing, um, to get so it ready can, for sale. Okay. Sure, you I can, I can do that. referral or, you know, even oversee those kinds of activities. Mm -hmm. Boy, mm -hmm. what a peace of mind that you can offer for people. <laughs> yeah, you, you want to get in there and help them as long as they need it. Um, we were talking stories a minute ago. I mean, I had one client who um, moved to Florida, and they wanted to fill their car with what they were taking to Florida, only her husband had just had rotary cuff surgery. So um, we loaded their car for him because he couldn't do it, mm -hmm. and away they went. So, I mean, you, you just find that every situation's different. Everybody needs a little something, but it kind of felt good that I got to do that and see him drive away, and I felt like, wow, <laughs> I 
<laughs> really started Fact at the beginning up. and finished with them. So, nice. you know, and Very nice. yeah, and people appreciate that when they know that you're going to make that extra effort. I, I think it's important. You know, transition, like I said, is so tough, and every situation is different, and uh, everybody handles it differently. Well, I. I Probably we touched on this too, but I would imagine that in so many cases you're dealing with elderly people whose children don't even live here, and they'll maybe find you and mm -hmm. say, "We need you to go in and do this." I, you know, I think the the elderly. When we're speaking of elderly, I'm thinking of people that maybe are in their 80s or right. so. I haven't really had a lot of elderly people call me it's been their children mm -hmm. um, thank God they have children whether their children are here locally or not um, but it's the kids that will say you know we are dealing with mom and dad we need you to get furniture gone so it's been more of that kind of thing but if there was anything they needed me to do um, I'm happy to step in and, and help with the situation um, but I've been in situations um, in some of these retirement communities where they just need to have the place emptied within 24 hours because it's almost as if they have to turn it over to somebody else so you know it's it's very unique and, wow that's mm -hmm. got to be a tough one well in those instances sometimes you're forced to remove the items for them and put them in another venue and mm -hmm. so we'll take them to another estate sale if we have uh, two partials we'll try and put them together as long as both parties agree to it mm -hmm. um, I'll do that I mean that's like I said, be a challenge like I you. said it's unique and you try to come up with a solution yes so I guess that leads me to what are the benefits then of working with uh, your company? Well, I, I feel that you hire us and we come in and do a professional uh, a sale that will yield you the highest proceed and with no headaches to you. Um, you basically walk away and let us get in there and get it done. We send you a check, the place is empty and you didn't have to do any of the work. Um, and most people are just so grateful at the end that, that it's over with. Um, so it's just a nice scenario for them. Keeps me busy. Keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> keeps me working. But no, seriously, they, um, they need to have somebody do it for them. Because if you want to do it yourself, you can try it. And in a lifetime, you might do one estate sale anyways. But there's a lot of room for a mistake if you don't have... Um, a reference point, mm -hmm. and I've been doing this a while, and I've learned from mistakes. How long have so, you been doing this? About four years now. Mm -hmm. And you know, prior to that, I went to many. Um, I used to have a vintage shop, and I filled my vintage shop with estate sale items uh, that I purchased. So, and I've been in retail most of my life. So, selling it comes easy to me, and retail and setting it up and making it look like a store, all of that is um, easy. Good. And if somebody wants to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Well, they can call my office at 240-235-3163, or you can call me direct at 301-787-9399. Right. And um, hey. I'd be happy to come out, free assessment, no problem. Good. And email? Do you have an email address? Yeah, Colleen at uh, Vintage Merchant. And um, I, like I said, I will get back to you as soon as possible. Okay. Well, I think... This was really helpful to give people a, yeah. at least the knowledge that you're out there to help them get rid of all that stuff. So it was for me. Well, thank you. And I want to thank you again for being here. Thank you for having if, me. If you have an idea for a topic you'd like to see on Senior Solutions, please feel free to email me at SeniorSolutionsTV at gmail.com. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.